What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about ICL. So ICL is a corrective eye surgery. It's an alternative to LASIK. Personally, I was not a candidate for LASIK, so ICL was presented to me. So I'll go into detail all in this video. So first I want to talk a little bit about my eyesight and why I even wanted to do this in the first place. So of course I do not have wonderful vision and I do use contacts and glasses to correct it. It is something I'm fine with and I'm very happy that I was born in the day and age where contacts and glasses exist. Because if they didn't, I would probably be considered blind or at least legally blind because I am not able to see anything. If I had to read something in the morning without my glasses or contacts in, my phone has to be like this and I'm not kidding. Um, I can see color, shapes, if I squint, I can see a little bit more detail, but everything needs to be right in front of me in order to see it. Um, otherwise, it really is just blobs of color, shapes. I can tell that, you know, this potentially is a bed, you know, with common sense and stuff, but really is pretty bad. It's also pretty dangerous, uh, especially if something were to happen like the end of the world. I would just be screwed if I didn't have my contacts or glasses with me. So anyways, I am, I've wanted to get uh, a corrective eye surgery since I was a little girl. I, in third grade, I remember my first experience wearing glasses. I was given those really big, huge, uncool pink frame glasses and I never wanted to wear them. I remember my teachers would say, Margaret, <laughs> read the chalkboard and I had to take out my glasses, put them on and I was so embarrassed. I don't know why, it's so silly. I wish I could go back and talk to my younger self and be like, it's fine, wear them. But for some reason, I just was embarrassed to wear them. So it wasn't until high school that I actually got contacts. So up until that point, I only wore my glasses when I absolutely had to, like reading the board. When I did get my contacts and I would walk around the halls in school, I could not believe the level of detail that I was missing. I could see if somebody looked left, if somebody looked right in the hall, if someone waved to me. Before, if someone waved at me, I had no idea. I don't even know how I went on life without them. It's just mind blowing to me, but I did because I was embarrassed, which again, if I could go back, I would tell myself, cut it out, wear the glasses, it's fine. So, contacts became my saving grace. I feel like my life had changed tremendously. I could see so much more. Um, but over time, my prescription did change. It got worse and worse over time. So I was not able to qualify um, by my eye doctor for any kind of corrective eye surgery. So I just kept on wearing my contacts. So I'm at the point now where my vision is stable and I'm able to go ahead and get corrective eye surgery. So I went to the eye doctor and I was, it, I'm going to say this, it was probably the best day of my life walking into, going into this appointment. Um, but when I got there, I found out that I was not a candidate for LASIK. The reason why I'm not a candidate for LASIK is because I have high myopia and what that means, it's basically severe nearsightedness. My uh, contact prescription is negative 7.5. So a negative 7.50. I actually am technically negative 7.75, but they don't make a contact lens that um, power. So I just use the negative 7.5s. And yeah, like I said before, it means I really can't see anything. <laughs> um, so, and I also have astigmatism. So when I went to the eye doctor, they said that because of that, uh, they would not recommend LASIK for me and that I would not be a candidate. I was honestly crushed and really devastated by that because my whole life I really 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 looked for this moment and I'm sure any of you guys that have uh, poor vision and have wanted to get corrective eye surgery you could relate to this how heart-wrenching that may sound and if you have been told that you are not a candidate for LASIK or PRK or any of those really commonly known surgeries you may be available and able to go ahead and get um, ICL. So listen up if you heard that you're not a candidate. ICL has been around for a while, but personally I have never heard of ICL. When I uh, was told about it from my eye doctor, I was just like mind blown. What's the difference between LASIK and ICL? So with LASIK, they go in with a laser and they basically reshape the eye or the cornea of the eye so that you're able to see better. So it basically takes away a little bit of the eye with the laser. 
Whereas ICL, they are going to put a column or lens implanted behind the iris of your eye. So it's kind of considered an additive. So this columnar material is considered uh, something that works in harmony with your eyes. So it's never going to be something where your body is going to reject it. It doesn't come across as a foreign invader in our body just because it works in harmony with our eyes. So it's pretty cool. And the other really cool thing about it is it actually can be removed surgically if need be. So this is not something you would take, you know, you put in and take out every single day. Um, you would probably never, ever, ever do that in your entire life and you wouldn't be able to on your own. But if for some weird reason you had to remove it, <laughs> it's possible. So there is a lot of good things about it, which as I researched and learned more about it, I felt very comfortable getting ICL. Um, whereas LASIK, it's not irreversible. You are not able to go back. But with ICL, you're able to. Another cool thing about ICL is it does not cause or make your eye dry. Where with LASIK, if you already have dry eyes, it could make it worse, um, which, you know, it's just one of the symptoms of getting it. Whereas with ICL, it doesn't. So if you do have really dry eyes, maybe ICL is something you could also look into. I'm going to Boston Vision for my ICL surgery. I did a lot of research and just kept on coming back to Boston Vision, specifically Dr. Melky at Boston Vision. So I decided to book a consult and go in. When I booked the consult, I actually got matched with Dr. Melky, which I was really excited about because his resume and the things he has done is just it's the person you want to be performing the surgery on your eye. Like he knows what he's doing. He has the credentials to back it up. Um, I believe he even created uh, or invented something that they use to this day for cataract surgery, which is pretty incredible. So yeah, I was really stoked that he was the person that I got matched with for my consult. And he's also the person that did my iridotomy appointment and who is also gonna be performing the surgery for me as well. So I got him through it all. I'm sure you can go ahead and request him if you wanted to, but I know all their doctors are phenomenal. I just was really excited that Dr. Melky was my doctor. So far my experience at Boston Vision has been awesome. Everyone from the person that checks you in to the person that brings you to the waiting room to the person that is doing your um, consult, it's been awesome. Everyone's super friendly and kind. I've had the pleasure to talk to Dr. Melky, Alexi Melky, Rick Young, and uh, everyone else there. So they've just been super kind, and I've it's made it it's made a tense, kind of stressful, worrisome experience into one that you feel really safe and comfortable going in, and I really appreciate that with them. Went to the location in Brookline. I know they have multiple. I think they even have one in Medford and a couple other locations as well. Um, but the one in Brookline is beautiful. I think it's one of their newer locations, and everything is state of the art. It's pretty. It feels good to be in there and it's just been awesome so far. If you are planning on getting ICL, what to expect, or at least in my case, at my location at Boston Vision, what I've had to do is first you go in for your consult, find out if you're a candidate for LASIK, PRK, ICL, or what they can do for you. Um, once you find that out, if you are a candidate for ICL, you would go in for an aerodotomy appointment. What they basically do is they do a bunch of tests and then they also put very small holes in your eye, uh, like tiny microscopic holes, so that when they go and do the actual surgery and put the columnar lens in, it's a lot, it's able to breathe fine without any problems with your oxygen levels. This appointment, I was not able to wear my contacts for an entire week, which was interesting to say the least. I am someone that wears my contacts 24 seven, so not wearing my contacts for a whole week and wearing just my glasses felt really weird, very strange, and it was something to get used to, but by the end of it, I actually didn't mind it so much. So I already did my aerodotomy appointment. I now have my surgery date tomorrow, actually, and what they're gonna be doing is they are gonna be doing one eye at a time. So, of course I would love it if both eyes were done the same day so I can kind of move on, <laughs> but um, just for safety reasons, they are doing, and, and whatever other reasons they have, 
they are doing one eye at a time. They basically, you basically go in for your surgery date, and then the very next day you go in and they're gonna check the oxygen levels, make sure everything is good, and then you'll go in a week later for your other eye. I know some places do this differently. This is just how it happens at Boston Vision at the moment. So yeah, tomorrow they'll be doing one of my eyes, I'm not sure if it's left or right, and I apparently will be able to see right after the appointment. Of course, there will be some recovery time where my eye won't be perfect, but I'll be able to see out of it, which is pretty cool, like significantly. So with the eye that is not done, I'm able to wear a contact lens in it. So it is going to be a little funky for a little bit, but it is what it is. And then for my next appointment, they'll do the same thing, and then I should be able to see. Since I have high myopia, they said that I may still need a little bit of LASIK on top of the ICL um, to correct my vision perfectly. They will not know that until about like a week or so after my appointment when I go back in and they check my eyes. So I don't know if I'm going to need it or not, but it's a possibility for somebody like me in my situation. And that is included with the package to get ICL done, so it wouldn't cost any more if you need it. So I'm actually documenting this entire journey. I've already filmed pieces from my very first consult, my reaction, my thoughts, um, my aerodotomy appointment, and I'll also be doing that with my actual surgery date. So I'm going to put it all together in one big video, so look out for that. I also will do a video post-op, my thoughts, and just overall what I thought about the surgery and how I'm living my life with my new eyes. So if you want to stay updated on my entire ICL journey and also just fitness content, because I also share a lot of that, um, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.